forecast, showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that we're in. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. We've had fun the last couple days here at Alaska Kingfisher Lodge, but now it's time to get ready to take something home. So today's about harvesting. I'm gonna see if I can find a kink for myself. Danny, I know you're up here catching a bunch of kinks, so you may not want to take one home. Sam, I bet you want to take one home too. There's the nod right there, yep. So we're gonna see if we can not get a couple kinks to take back in our 50 pound boxes back home. So we're gonna come out here to the spot where we've been doing well, start out with plugs, see if we can't find a couple nice chrome bright kings that are coming in on this high tide. A lot of the kings we're fishing for up here right now are on their way to spawn. They're moving really fast. They don't have a lot of, I mean, they're not really feeding anymore. Now they're in fresh water. So a lot of what we do with our scents and our baits and our colors, our attracting stuff is all to uh, trigger instincts, you know? So we put wraps on our plugs with different scents to trigger these instincts that they have of feeding in the ocean to bite our lures when they're not really feeding in the river anymore. So what we're gonna try to do Put a plug in front of one's face with a nice wrap, a little fish nip on there, and see if we can get one to bite and take home for our box. On the Pinky White T50. Not quite big enough for the size that I want to take home, but it's a good start. Good chum. Chum. Good tail. Pink and white T50, fish nip underneath. Just can't resist pinned. it. We'll grab my pliers real quick. Yep. Clear. There he is. Nice. Back he goes. Beautiful fish. Thanks, buddy. See ya. No worse for wear there. Awesome. Another Kay. one for the books. It's hard not to catch him up here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, guys, let's see there's a few fish coming through. <laughs> oh. oh, that's fish. Double dub. Double dub. <laughs> We're not even trying to fish right now. We're just trying to get awesome underwater shots. So that way we can show you guys how these fish are coming up and reacting to. That's my over under over. And how these fish are reacting to the plugs, the action between the T50s and the maglips and how they're coming up and smelling that fish nip, keying in on it, and they come up and bite, and how they react when they do bite it. Are they turning, are they swallowing? We're not in the slot. We're not even covering the right part of this hole just to make sure we get the shots. And we're now we're doubled up, both on camera. Yeah, fishing's that good up here. Couple of nice little manageable ones, huh? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm glad both these are smaller fish, too. If these were two big 20, 30 pound kings, we'd be in trouble, but they're two nice, small little ones. Mark, that circular mark on them is a lamprey bite. They're like a, basically a fish mosquito. Big mosquito. Yeah, big mean, <laughs> not big fun mean to mess with mosquito. The sun just came out. So again, we're trying to get shots of different lures working under, underwater. And uh, 
So the sun just came out, so I put on a T50 fire starter, that chartreuse in red, but the body itself is chrome. Man, this fish is scorching me. But as soon as that sun came out, that uh, chrome body should shine. Oh, and I, did he just come off? No, he's there, okay. The chrome body should shine. And this fish really is not that big, but these fish fight so hard, and it's because they just came in out of the estuary here on this high tide. Yeah. This is like one of the first spots they stop. This spot we've we found this year that they're coming up out of a tide, and one hour after high tide, they bite right here every day. Not that big. I mean, it's, it's under 10 pounds, but he's stripped out a good solid 50, 60 feet of line. Side of the boat. I didn't want to, I shouldn't have, but now I've hooked the pig and we gotta go chase it. Pretty game? Yeah. Time to go marlin fishing. That, that's a big tail, dude. That's a big tail. That, that was a good tail, ocean, though. That, that was 20. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> right off the side of the boat. That, that's a bright fish. Yep. We're allowed two kinks per person? Yep. You can take that one. Yeah. Looks like she choked it pretty good too, so. Yeah, that's That's a tank. Oh, baby. That's high 20s. Yep. Gorgeous fish. Look at the shoulders on that. Length right. isn't really there. Is that pretty common for these fish? There's not much length, yeah. but a lot of girth. Yeah, especially the bucks. Did she eat it or no? <laughs> There you go. There's your nush got king. There it is. <laughs> Little side drifting setup. Beautiful. Look at that belly. Jeez, man. That's what we're looking for, huh? <laughs> That's nice. awesome. There you go. That is a perfect nush got king right there. Awesome fish. Nice head. And, and these fish, from what I've heard, they actually go quite a ways up river. Is that right? To spawn? Oh, man. That's why. That's why these fish are comparable to springers in their taste because they build that fat. They go in like Columbia style distance. So, so a couple hundred miles? Yeah, at least. Wow. Yep. So that's why down here, how far away are we from the estuary? 10 miles, 15, 20 miles. So they have a long ways to go. Like you said, it's like catching a Columbia River Springer. It is. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, Trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes or the patented skip beat action. Or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. We're gonna hurry up and run back up to the top back when we were anchored up. And of course we're gonna keep on trying to get them on plugs, but man, there's so many fish coming through right now. I just want to hurry up and get back up there. I got a guide rig going right now, so I'm, I already brought the motors up, turned it on, starting to rinse off, rebaiting. Let's get, get up there. Yeah, go, go, go. They're here. Good. A little bit of eggs, a little bit of fish nip in there. It's like 90% fish nip, 10% egg. It'll work. It'll work in an egg sack. Bite it, fishies. <laughs> First cast with a fish nip. Oh man, that's a big one. Oh man, that's a big one. I have yet to make a cast all day without hooking a king. That was a big fish. A really big fish. That was the first cast after you got yours. Uh, yeah. And what we switched up on was we put on a little spawn sack with a fish nip in it. Yep. And it was first cast. Oh yeah, instantly. 
You said that you saw it and it had a little bit of red on it? A little bit of red. Oh, tease me. Here we go. Oh man, that's a big one. Jeez, I didn't even feel a bite. I didn't even feel a bite, dude. <laughs> it, dude, that, that's on straight fish nip in the spawn sack. jumping. It's not that big of a fish, you know, it's a teen, it's the average fish of what we've been catching. But you know, what's, what's nice is that we caught that fish on straight fish nip. And the reason why we designed that bait was so that in areas like this where there's limited access to bait, or maybe an area where you're, you're not wanting to harvest a lot of hens, you're just trying to be sensitive to the fishery, you have access to another bait. And we've not only caught it now in a spawn sack, just drift fishing it with straight fish nip, yep. but also wrapping it on the plugs. You don't need to have sardines, you don't need to have tuna, you don't need to have eggs. Perfect. You have a solution mm -hmm. for any bait in any situation for salmon. Yeah, well this, this bait already caught a fish. Yep. Ten other casts, I mean it's pretty worn down and it's still. And you're using less bait. Yeah, you don't even <laughs> use We didn't bait. use much, we yeah. used, you know, golf ball, maybe a little bit yeah. less. That's fish number three that's bit this, so. On one bait. Yep. You're 15 pounds, dude, not 30. appetizing anymore with how many <laughs> fish it's bit it but as you can see he wanted it really bad still on there right oh yeah okay line's not afraid great. looks good no you're good Scent still great fish number four on it plug bite died oh no yep now you're on oh, now you're off <laughs> this is so fun dude we were getting them on plugs and now we're like oh what else can we catch them on let's try this let's try that so i'm eating right there Jeez. come on you screwed up my drift come on man Oh, that's scorcher. Gone. Jeez! Look at him back out of the water. Look at him go. Again, that's like, you know, mid teens, yeah. maybe high teens. Not a huge fish, but man, we're, oh, you don't even have the line counter on there. I mean, he's he's got half the spool gone. <laughs> Lead. Nope. Just a mean and dark fish. Thirty pound leader on there, and I still could not. That sixty-five, sixty-five pound braid eight said you had thirty pound. Mm -hmm. That's a small hook on there. What do you got? Thirty pound ultra green. All I saw just found a one knot. That worked. It worked. Didn't even bend. <laughs> Spinner time. Spinning just like you should. My nook, my coho, my chum, and my sockeye. We're catching so many fish right now. We're, we haven't even moved the boat. He's jumping back there. I just started to think, oh, I wonder what else I can catch him on right here. So I threw on one of the new salmon colored rooster tails in one ounce. And of course, it's my favorite color, that candy wrapper metallic pink with a dark pink spot on the blade. And that was my third cast. Here's that spinner I just put on. Again, it's my favorite color, candy wrapper. Metallic pink with a dark pink spot, brass back. And here it's single hook regulation, so I threw on a five out single hook. So cool being able to come to a place like this and just try out every single different technique you can think of, hone your skills, and actually learn a lot about these fish. You have a lot of opportunity to see fish reacting differently to different lures, different gear, different baits, all throughout the tide, throughout the day. I mean, when it was cloudy out, we were catching them on white and pink. Sun came out, the chrome started working. This, this is a cool deal. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I'm gonna get another one. There you go. Oh yeah. Got him. <laughs> I think I hooked a big one. I'm 
to get out here because we don't really want to move our spot, but we also want to be able to run with them if we need to. <laughs> That's Stay a big there. fish, dude. How we doing, bud? Do we need to jump in the boat? I know, I'm not getting much. He's not too far. I mean, he's far, but he's not like... So I'm getting dude, that is... And you went to a smaller hook too, didn't you? Yeah, in a lighter line. <laughs> Baby him. Baby him. Keep walking down with him as he gets more tired. I'm worried, like right now, he's using the current. He's yep. like gaining his energy back. I didn't see a tail or anything yet. You know that's big. Oh, he's scorching you. Keep getting him close and then he just... So, it's a dead spot down there. We gotta turn, right now he's got his head working against the current. Yeah, we got two options. We either just keep chasing ah. him down and get an angle on him and hope he gets tired. 25? Okay, 25. okay move down with the beach with him here. I wanna get that head turned in. Yeah, oh, there down. you go, good job, perfect. Guide telling another guide what to do. <laughs> Gutsy move, Matt. It's not a small fish. I think it's bigger than it looks. I think we got a bad angle on it. Pushing water. Yeah, you got you. Full, full process. <laughs> I think the first one's bigger than that, but that one is by far and away way brighter. Beautiful fish. I mean, that is just a specimen. Yeah, that's why I fought so hard. They come up from the ocean and they still have all that. How deep that is. That corky just barely hanging out of the corner of its mouth. Yep. Well, okay. That one might be pretty close to the, big. the first one. <laughs> Got one. Oh, man. About as heavy as the other one, huh? Yeah, probably. I might be eating crow on that. Yeah. I said well, the first one's bigger, but that's. It's, it's that's, in there. Look at the belly. This. Right head. Awesome fish to get, kid. Beautiful. Sweet fish. <laughs> yeah. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. A little hole, yeah, Danny. Do it. You have to basically at this point. Yep, it's gone. Oh, God. Burning it, baby. Awesome. That was way out there too. Dude, four and five cash just swinging a plug. <laughs> so fun. They're wrecking you too. Who needs eggs? Just wrap a plug up, throw some fish nip on it, swing it out there. Every time, oh man, every time it swings into that scene. Ugh, ugh, I'm just so aggressive in your hand. Just walk him in. Don't let him know that there's any pressure there. Let him swim right up. that fish is. Yeah, sure. I'll just walk up to you. You get away from me. Flawless. Dude, that is just chrome. <laughs> Nickel bright.
I called it too. I go, it should happen right here. Boom. This is ridiculous. I, I haven't changed the wrap on the plug all day long. Oh, did it just come off? Oh, it just came off right there. I'll show you guys this plug. Haven't changed the wrap all day. You still see the sinew from the tuna that's in the fish nip coming through. It's all beat up, teeth marks all over the lure. And all I'm doing is just casting straight out. Let it swing down below the boat. And then as soon as it hits that seam, I get bit. I make the cast quite as long as I should have there, but watch this, I should be able to call it when it should get bit. I mean, that was five out of six casts there. I'm getting pretty arrogant right now. Just expecting to get bit every yeah, cast. Single cast. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm still a little short. Should be a little bit further out, but we'll see if they moved up. Right about here, from here on in. There he is. <laughs> Woo! We're not here to cheer you. We're here to booyah! Fighting it either. Oh, and I think it's because it's swinging. Yeah, it's not like slowly not, dropping back. Yeah, to chase it, not just yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. You done dinking around with eggs and gonna start swinging plugs with me? Who needs eggs? Ever just again. Swing plugs. And you know what? We've had the same wrap of fish nip on there the whole day. One pack could go and last you. No, probably not that. But a whole pack can last you a couple days. And just go fish, 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 fish. Oh, dude, another just nickel bright. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. That, that fish hasn't moved 10 feet yet. Yeah, it did look great. Oh, that's a bright fish. So while Sam, our camera guy, was fighting that last fish, I cast out that white and pink T50 again, and right away, boom, it got hooked. Well, this is not a big fish like the others that we've kept, but this is an interesting fish. First, it's chrome bright, fresh out of the ocean like some of the others that we caught. But second, adipose is clipped. And Danny, what were you saying about hatcheries around the Nishigak River? There is a hatchery for 100, more than 100 miles, anywhere around here. Yeah, so this is obviously a stray fish, and I. I wonder if there's a way, I might actually see, since I have some friends back at the department, back back home, see if we get some scale samples and maybe even see if there's a pit tag in there. See if we can find out. And get some information on it, because this is yeah. obviously a fish that has strayed. Mm -hmm. I Absolutely. mean, hatchery fish, that's that's why we're keeping this one. Yep. And it's a chrome bright, oh, perfect specimen, so. Too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they say there's only been, at our camp, only one other hatchery fish ever caught here. Uh, the entire history of the camp. In, in our camp, yep, in 30 whatever years, so. 25 years. Man, that's, yeah, I feel like I got like, it's awesome. You know, a double bearded hen or something like that, you something know, like just, that, yeah. <laughs> like a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just really rare, rare fish. That's cool. That's really interesting. Yep, a right, good one to keep. Perfect yeah, of size. course, it's chrome. Chrome bright fish, yep. Beautiful. That was fun.
that's that's a tank. That's our third high 20s fish today. I mean, I think you mentioned it earlier today too that that's we probably had more bites than per cast and not bites. More per cast with bites than not. Yeah. 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 Man, I don't know if I can catch another one of those. <laughs> Holy crap. That was a beautiful fish. That was my first really nice big buck of the day. Got a lot of nice hens. That was dang near 30 pounds. Chrome bright, sea lice. That was by far and away the best Chinook bite I've ever seen in my life. And that was otherworldly, unreal. So I, I think at this point, we're thankful for the day that we had. We wrap everything up here before the rain starts coming in, get our fish cleaned up, and just sit back, relax, and reflect on what the hell just happened. That was, excuse my language, but that was unreal. I'm, I'll never forget this day.